We picked up on David Cameron's speech with the pro-EU SNP Foreign Affairs spokesperson Alex Salmond and the Scottish director of Vote Leave, Tom Harris. Tom Harris, the Prime Minister, saying that Brexit could jeopardise the security of the United Kingdom. I know, it's quite hilarious, isn't it? I mean, does anyone take this sort of thing seriously? We're in the middle of a really serious debate with a very serious question to be asked of the electorate on the 23rd of June. And the Prime Minister, the man who actually called this referendum, um, is saying that if people vote the way he doesn't want, there could be a war. I mean, it, it, it's, it's absurd. It really is. It's, it's absurd, Alex Hammond. Well, of course, Tom Harris was uh, quite happy to sign up for these absurdities in the Better Together campaign, which he played a, uh, a leading role. Uh, and I happen to agree with him. I mean, I've been calling on the Prime Minister today to move the cam away, uh, campaign away from this uh, scaremongering nonsense and get on to the, the manifest and obvious positive reasons for being part of the, of the European Union. Uh, but nonetheless, it's a bit rich for Tom Harris, who was perfectly happy to sign up for the scaremongering of Better Together, now to start whining about the same scaremongering from the same Prime Minister when it comes to the European campaign. But is the United Kingdom safer in Europe, Alexander? Well, I, I think you can argue. I mean, the, the reasonable point is, you can, I think you can argue that the, the, the European ideal has contributed to peace and stability in Europe over the last 66 years. I mean, that was the Robert Schuman vision all of these years ago. I think you can argue it's made a contribution to peace and stability in Europe, which, you know, of course, hasn't been there for the previous thousand years. Uh, but I think it's uh, where the Prime Minister perhaps errs on the side of uh, scaremongering is when he says, therefore, a withdrawal, a Brexit, would mean you totally undo or jeopardise that situation. I, I think that's difficult to sustain. I think the Prime Minister would say, look, he didn't write the Daily Mail headline. But then, of course, the Prime Minister and the Daily Mail will try to stay as close as possible in normal circumstances. But look, I want a campaign for Europe which concentrates on what really matters. That's jobs and social protection and being part of a, an arrangement of, uh, of 28 countries which allows us to tackle the big issues in the world like climate change in a collective way. That's the argument that will win this campaign. A few points for you to pick up there, Tom Harris. Well, um, first of all, I, 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 if the EU's contribution to peace exists at all, um, I think it's a very minor one. Most historians will tell you that the reason we've had peace in Europe since 1945 is nothing at all to do with the EU and its predecessor organisations. It's more to do with NATO. It's more to do with the spread of democracy because on the whole, democracies tend not to go to war with each other. Um, but yeah, I, I, am, I am delighted that David Cameron wants to kind of start this campaign in fifth gear because he's got nowhere to go from here. I mean, maybe next year, maybe next week he'll announce that the asteroid heading to Earth is, will only miss us if we vote to, to remain. Um, I'm, Alex, is, Alex is right. And I, can, can I just say that the SNP have actually taken a more progressive, open-minded approach to this referendum than all the other parties. Uh, Stephen Gethins, the Europe spokesman, said on the 5th of January this year that the SNP believed Britain would thrive outside the EU. Now, they have their own definite position, and I, and I don't demur from that. I, I accept that they have that position. But at least they're acknowledging that there is life and there is prosperity outside the EU, and I wish that other parties would actually follow suit. Would you accept that praise, Alex Hammond? Yes, uh, of course. I always accept praise <laughs> from, from, from Tom whenever ever I, can, I, can, I can get it. I, I think our argument is we do better within the, the European arrangement. Not that you couldn't be out with it, but you do better inside it. I mean, you see, the central contradiction uh, in the Brexit campaign is not about uh, defence and security. The central contradiction uh, is they, they want an arrangement on trade uh, in the same way as Norway or Switzerland has without having any of the obligations that these countries who are out with the European Union but within the European Economic Area or EFTA have to undertake. Uh, and some of the kind of right-wing nutters who, who Tom's now associated with in the Brexit campaign, they don't want any of that. They don't want to be Norway or Switzerland. They want to be a kind of Singapore somewhere in the mid-Atlantic without realising that the very basis of Singapore's prosperity is based on ASEAN and wider trading relationships. Uh, so that's the central contradiction. If you settle, I believe, unlike the Prime Minister, if you say, look, we're going to sign up for EFTA, the European Economic Area, then you could have a deal in a relatively short period of time. But of course, comes with that deal things that the Brexiteers don't like, like free movement of, uh, of labour and all of the 
obligations of being part of the club. In other words, you become a, a decision taker instead of a, a decision maker. And that's the central contradiction between people like Tom, who are reasonable, intelligent people, uh, and some of the rather colourful characters he's now fallen into. He's fallen into some bad company <coughs> these days. A central contradiction, uh, Tom Harris. What would uh, a, a UK outside of the EU, what would its relationship with Europe be? There is this fallacy, and I think Alec has, has tried to propagate it tonight, that the reason, the only reason that the UK trades with anyone is because we're in the EU. You, you know, this is absurd, the idea that we couldn't trade if we were outside the, uh, outside the EU. You know, the key to trading, the key to selling the products your country makes is produ producing very high quality stuff. And we take the Scotch Whiskey Association, which yesterday or this morning has complained that there'd be no future for the industry outside the EU. This is utter nonsense. There is more Scotch whiskey sold in uh, shops in France than there is Napoleonic brandy. You know, as long as we make good stuff, people will buy them. And I don't accept this idea that, you know, there has to be a template outside the EU. If life is so appalling for Switzerland and Norway, to take the two examples that Alec has, has mentioned, why are they not queuing up to join the EU? You know, mm. th there is such a thing as prosperity and, yes, Alec, independence outside the EU. It's a very strange trading organisation that insists on political integration in order to sell your goods. Oh, so. that, that's precisely the point, of course. See, I, I agree with Tom. I mean, I think the UK could, in a relatively short period of time, probably within two years, negotiate a similar relationship with the European Union as Norway or Switzerland has. But the trouble with that is that involves accepting the obligations of, it, of getting entry into the single market. Norway, for example, free movement of labour makes a contribution into the European Union budget, accepts the obligations, restrictions uh, that uh, befall EU members. Now, the, the, the co bedfellows that Tom is in with don't want any of that. Their reason for leading the Brexit campaign is, is to be unhindered by any of the obligations that Norway or Switzerland accepts. And if you don't accept these obligations, then your possibility of an early trading agreement like Norway and Switzerland has basically goes out the window. That is the contradiction. But not perhaps a contradiction for somebody like Tom, but unfortunately for Tom, you know, he's not leading the Brexit campaign, certainly not down here, uh, where there's some colourful nutcases are in the van. But the idea that you must have freedom of movement with every single trade agreement is a nonsense. The EU itself is in the middle of negotiating a trade agreement with America that does not involve and will not involve freedom of movement. But would we be inside <coughs> or outside the single market? We would probably be outside the single market but inside the European free trade area. Oh. Um, now uh, here's, a, here's an example I think Alec will have some sympathy with. At the moment only 5% of, of Scottish businesses uh, export anywhere but 100% of, of Scottish businesses have to abide by the regulations that the EU set for their industry. That means 95% of industry are coping with these very burdensome regulations. Outside the EU they would be free from that. Very briefly and finally respond to that Alex Allen. Yes and that market of 500 million people is an opportunity for these Scottish businesses and I spent a lot of time <coughs> trying to expand the base of Scottish businesses who were taking advantage of that opportunity. That's what I want to see in a constructive and positive way. Alex Allen and Tom Harris, thank you both for joining us. Thank you.